you're looking at one of the most extraordinary color sensing mechanisms on Earth, the human eye. Come closer. Every image we see is inverted by the lens at the front of the eye and cast on the retina at the back of the eye. While the entire image is sensed by the retina, only a small part of the retina is able to measure color. That part is called the fovea. But because the color-sensitive fovea is so small, our color sensibilities have a limited range, only five degrees or so. Here's a demonstration. Stare at the white dot at the center of the frame. Focus on the dot and don't look away. We're going to bring up other dots on the screen, but keep your eyes locked on the white dot or you'll spoil the test. Notice that the colored dots around the white dot seem dull and muddy. Okay, now look at the other dots. Are they the color you thought they were? Only when you move your eyes will you perceive their bright primary colors. All of our senses make adjustments so that we touch, smell, taste, hear, and see things in a balanced way. For example, Walk from bright sunshine into a dark building, and the colors inside will appear almost black. After a few minutes, your eyes adjust, and the true colors reveal themselves. Color perception also varies based on the conditions your eyes become accustomed to. This is known as chromatic adaptation. Stare at the black spot in the middle of the magenta circle. Can you still see the circles? This is the effect of chromatic adaptation. The circles will disappear in a second or so. Designers know that if they stare at proofs for too long, their eyes will become too accustomed to a limited color palette and reduce their range of perception. While proofing, it's important to look away and refresh your color palette. When faced with contrasting colors close together, your eyes can perceive colors in ways that are not to be trusted. Here, all the green swatches are exactly the same color, yet they seem perceptibly different based on their context. The same is true of the red. The surround that encloses color can also affect perception. Notice how these two blues look slightly different because of the different color of the surround. But did you think the blues were that different? Colors in our periphery can really lead us astray. The lesson is, when evaluating color, remove other colored objects from the periphery of your vision. Brightness, too, is extremely relative and subject to perceptual variance. Here is a gray scale from the blackest black to what seems the whitest white. But when you compare it to another gray scale, we can make a whiter white. Here's a better example. This bright white circle is as white a white as we can make, but the eye is fooled again as we show you an even whiter circle. It's important to know the difference between luminance and brightness. Luminance is a measured value of an object's output of light. Brightness is a human perception of an object's intensity. It depends on the intensity of the surrounding environment. What seems like a bright, sharp laptop screen in a dimly lit room can be difficult to read in the bright sunshine. Here, the luminance of the display hasn't changed. What has been affected is your perception of its brightness based on the surround. White light is the part of the electromagnetic band that we can see. It's actually composed of a spectrum of colors ranging from red to violet. Computers can display millions of colors by adding red, green, and blue light in myriad combinations. This is known as the additive color space. It gets its name because red, green, and blue light add together to make white light. 
paper can display millions of colors by layering cyan, magenta, yellow, and black inks in myriad combinations and values. The spectral colors in white light are absorbed by the pigments, leaving the colors we see. This is known as the subtractive color space. Today, with Apple Cinema displays having larger gamuts than CRT technology, the infinite variety of color inks can be successfully matched from computer displays to paper more reliably than ever before. So what designers create in their imaginations and on their computers can now be displayed just as clearly as printed images on paper for audiences around the world to view with their own eyes.